Hey guys, today we have an impressive story to share with you. Imagine going through a near-death experience and, in the depths of despair, receiving a divine revelation about the future of humanity. That's exactly what happened to Alonzo Izquierdo, and what he discovered could change the way we all see what's to come in 2024. Before you start, leave your like, subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so you don't miss out no videos with surprising stories like this. Let's dive together into this journey of overcoming, faith, and an incredible prophetic message. Hello, my name is Alonzo Izquierdo. I never thought I would be here telling this story, but I believe it is important to share what I experienced. I'm not a famous writer or spiritual leader. I'm just an ordinary man who went through something extraordinary. It all started in 2007, a year that changed my life in ways I could never have imagined. I had a normal life, you know. I worked. I had my friends, my family. I was in a relationship that I thought would last forever. I had plans, dreams, like everyone else. But life has a funny way of turning everything upside down when we least expect it. That year, I lost my relationship. It was as if the ground disappeared beneath my feet. I didn't know how to deal with that. And as if that weren't enough. My dog, my companion of 12 years, is also gone. It was too much for me. I sank. I started drinking. I wasn't sleeping well. It was a wreck, inside and out. I'm not proud of how I handled all of this. But I think it's important to tell you, because it was this path that led me to the experience that changed everything. An experience that made me see life, death and everything else in a completely different way. What I'm about to tell you now may seem hard to believe. Sometimes, I have a hard time believing it myself. But it happened, and it changed everything for me. So if you can, listen with an open mind. Because what I learned that night in January 2008 wasn't just about me, but about all of us and what might lie ahead. It was January 2008. I was at rock bottom, but something in me was still fighting. I decided to go to the gym, thinking that maybe exercise would help me get out of that emotional hole. Little did I know that that decision would change my life forever. I started running on the treadmill, wanting to feel something other than the emotional pain that was consuming me. I ran, ran, and ran. My body, already weakened by lack of sleep and too much alcohol, started to show signs that something wasn't right. I felt a pain in my chest, a pain I had never felt before, but I ignored it. I kept running, as if I could escape my problems. When I left the gym, things went downhill quickly. I started to feel cramps first in my calves, then in my thighs. Within minutes, my entire body felt like it was rebelling against me. Every muscle hurt, every movement was agony. I got on the subway, trying to act normal, but it was impossible. People passed me, and I wanted to scream for help, but I couldn't. My voice disappeared. My body no longer obeyed me. Panic started to take over me. My heart was beating so loudly I could hear it. Boom, 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 faster and faster, more and more irregular. I felt as if all the blood in my body was pooling in my chest. My extremities went cold, then numb. Time seemed to slow down. I looked around me, seeing people walking in slow motion. I wanted to ask for help, but I couldn't move. I was trapped inside my own body, watching helplessly as it failed. At that moment, I was sure I was going to die, right there in the middle of that subway station, surrounded by strangers. I thought about my family, my friends. I thought about all the things I didn't do, all the words I didn't say. Regret washed over me like a wave. My vision began to darken around the edges. It was as if a tunnel was closing around me. My heart, which had previously been beating frantically, now seemed to be slowing down. Each beat was weaker than the last. Boom. Boom. Boom and then silence. Just when I thought it was all over, something incredible happened. Suddenly, I no longer felt pain. I no longer felt afraid. It was as if I had been freed from all physical sensations. I opened my eyes, or at least I thought I had, and found myself floating above my own body. There I was, lying on the floor of the subway station, pale and still. 
The people around seemed to have finally noticed that something was wrong. I watched as someone knelt down next to me, checking my vitals. But I wasn't there anymore. I was... somewhere else. A place I cannot fully describe with words. It was like I was everywhere and nowhere at the same time. The colors were more vivid than anything I had ever seen before. There was a light, a light so bright it should have blinded me, but it didn't. It was welcoming, comforting. And then, I heard a voice. It wasn't a voice like the ones we hear every day. It was a voice that seemed to come from inside me and everywhere at the same time. It was soft but powerful, calm but authoritative. I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was in the presence of something much bigger than myself. The voice called me by name. Alonzo, she said, I know you. I know every part of you. Every joy. Every sadness. Every mistake. And every success. At that moment, I felt a wave of unconditional love wash over me. All the weight I carried, all the guilt, all the regret, just dissolved. For the first time in a long time, I felt at peace. But along with this peace came a deep understanding. I saw my entire life flash before my eyes, not like a movie, but like I was reliving every moment. I saw the choices I made, the people I hurt, the opportunities I wasted. But there was no trial, just understanding. I wanted to stay there forever, in that place of peace and love. But something inside me knew it wasn't my time. So I did something I had never done before. I prayed. I begged for a second chance. I promised that if I could go back, I would do things differently. I would dedicate my life to something bigger. It was then that the voice spoke again. Alonso, she said, you have a purpose. There is something you need to do. And then, he showed me something that would change my life forever. I saw flashes of the future. October 2024. I couldn't see clear details, but I felt something monumental was about to happen. Something that would change the course of humanity. And somehow, I had a role to play in that. Before I could fully process what I had seen, I felt a force pulling me back. It was as if he was falling, but at the same time, rising. My eyes opened, and I was back in my body breathless and confused, but alive. When I came to, I was lying on the cold floor of the subway station. A group of people were around me looking worried. Someone was holding my hand, someone else was talking on the phone, probably calling an ambulance. I tried to sit up, but my body felt like it weighed a ton. Every muscle ached, as if I had run a marathon. My head was pounding and I felt disoriented. It was as if I had been away for years when in reality it must have only been a few minutes. The first thing I noticed was the air. I had never paid much attention to what it felt like to breathe, but in that moment, every breath felt like a miracle. Air entered my lungs, and I could feel life flowing back into my body. People around me asked questions, but I could barely understand what they were saying. My mind was elsewhere, replaying what I had just experienced. The light, the voice, the visions of the future. Everything seemed so real, so vivid. But now, back in the physical world, it began to seem like a distant dream. When the ambulance arrived, the paramedics quickly examined me before placing me on the stretcher. During the ride to the hospital, I was silent, trying to process everything that had happened. Part of me wanted to tell them about the experience, about the voice I heard, about the visions for the future. But something told me to wait, to keep this to myself for now. At the hospital, I underwent a series of tests. The doctors were intrigued. My heart had stopped for a few minutes, they said. But there were no signs of permanent damage. It was as if my body had entered a type of hibernation mode, preserving my vital organs. I was hospitalized for four days. During this time, I had a lot of time to think about my life about the choices I had made, about what I had experienced during my death. With each passing day, the experience seemed to become more distant, like a dream that fades when you wake up. But the feeling of peace, the feeling of purpose, that remained. When I was finally discharged, 
I left the hospital a changed man. Physically, I was weaker, still recovering. But mentally, spiritually, I felt stronger than ever. I knew I had been given a second chance, and I was determined not to waste it. I came home with a mission. I didn't know exactly what the future held, what exactly would happen in October 2024, but I knew I needed to prepare. I needed to change my life, become a better, stronger, more compassionate person. The road ahead wouldn't be easy. I knew that. Old habits are hard to break, and I had a lot of fixing to do in my life. But for the first time in a long time, I had hope. Hope in the future. Hope in myself. Hope in humanity. As I lay in my own bed that first night home, staring at the ceiling, I made a silent promise. I promised that I would live each day with purpose, that I would help others whenever I could, that I would prepare for whatever the future brought. And most of all, I promised I would never forget what I had experienced that night on the subway. I fell asleep with a feeling of peace I hadn't felt in years, eager to begin my new journey. In the days and weeks following my near-death experience, I began to notice changes in myself. These were not dramatic changes, visible to everyone, but small changes in the way I saw the world and interacted with it. The first thing I noticed was a feeling of calm that I had never experienced before. The things that used to irritate me, the traffic, the lines at the supermarket, the little frustrations of everyday life, now seemed insignificant. I found myself smiling in situations that would have made me furious before. My relationship with time has also changed. Before, I was always rushing, always late, always feeling like there weren't enough hours in the day. Now, I found myself more present in the moment. I began to appreciate the little things, the taste of coffee in the morning, the sound of birds, the smile of a stranger on the street. My relationships started to improve. I became a better, more empathetic listener. I began to see people not just for what they did or said, but for who they were inside. It was like I could feel the light inside each person, even when they couldn't see it in themselves. My habits also started to change. Alcohol, which used to be my escape, lost its appeal. I started eating better and exercising regularly. Not because someone told me to, but because I wanted to take care of the body that was returned to me. One of the most significant changes was my new openness to spirituality. I had never been a religious person. In fact, I used to be quite skeptical of anything that couldn't be explained by science. But after what I experienced, I could no longer deny that there was something more, something beyond what we can see and touch. I started exploring different spiritual beliefs and practices, meditation, prayer, reading sacred texts. I was open to everything. I wasn't looking for a specific religion to follow, but rather trying to better understand what I had experienced and what it meant for my life. I also started researching near-death experiences. I discovered that I was not alone, that many people had gone through something similar. Reading your accounts helped me process my own experience and gave me a sense of community that I didn't expect. However, not everything was perfect. Sometimes I felt overwhelmed by everything that had happened. There were days when I doubted myself, when I wondered if I had really experienced it all, or if it was just my mind playing tricks on me. And the vision of the future I had received, the mysterious event of October 2024, sometimes weighed on my mind like a burden. But even on difficult days, the sense of purpose remained. I knew I had been spared for a reason, that I had a role to play in what was to come. This certainty gave me the strength to continue, even when doubts arose. One of the hardest things to deal with was explaining my move to the people around me. Some friends and family noticed the difference in me and were happy with the transformation. Others seemed confused or even suspicious. I didn't blame anyone for their reactions. After all, if someone had told me a similar story a few months earlier, I probably would have been skeptical too. I decided to be selective about who I shared my full experience with. To most people, I would simply say that I had experienced a health scare that made me reevaluate my priorities. It wasn't a lie, but it wasn't the whole truth either. I kept the deeper details, the light, the voice, the visions of the future, to myself 
and to a very small circle of people I trusted completely. As the months passed, the initial transformation began to settle in as my new normal. I still had a lot to learn, a lot to grow, but I felt like I was on the right path. The broken man who had entered that subway station in January 2008 had been left behind. In his place was someone stronger, more compassionate, and, above all, more aware of the precious gift that is life. Despite the initial transformation I experienced following my near-death experience, the path was not always easy or linear. There were moments of doubt, periods of relapse, and challenges that tested my new perspective on life. About six months after the incident, I began to feel a sort of spiritual hangover. The initial euphoria had worn off, and I found myself struggling with the practicalities of everyday life. Bills to pay, problems at work, family conflicts. All of these things still existed, and sometimes they seemed to contradict the sense of peace and purpose I had experienced. There were days when I found myself falling into old habits. A particularly stressful argument at work sent me back to the bottle for one night. I felt terribly guilty afterwards, as if I had betrayed the second chance I had been given. But then I remembered something I had learned during my experience. The unconditional love I felt wasn't dependent on my perfection. I learned to be kinder to myself, to see these moments not as failures, but as learning opportunities. One of the biggest challenges was dealing with the vision of the future I received. The thought of a significant event in October 2024 sometimes weighed heavily on my mind. There were days when I would obsess over it, trying to decipher what it could be, wondering if I was doing enough to prepare. Other times, I doubted whether I had actually seen something or whether it was just my imagination. I also faced challenges in my relationships. Some old friends found it difficult to relate to the new me. They wanted the old Alonzo back, the guy who drank with them and laughed at rude jokes. I had to learn to set limits, to be true to myself even when it meant losing some connections. My family, while supportive of my overall change, was sometimes concerned about my new interest in spirituality. My mother, in particular, feared that I was getting involved in some kind of cult. It took time and many patient conversations for her to understand that my spiritual quest was genuine and personal not something imposed by others. One of the most difficult periods came when I lost my job during a company restructuring. For a while, I felt lost and questioned everything I thought I had learned. Financial insecurity has brought back many of the fears and anxieties I thought I had overcome. It was a real test of my new perspective on life, but it was during this difficult time that I also experienced some of the most profound moments of growth. I learned to truly trust to have faith that things would happen as they should. I used my unemployment time to volunteer at a local shelter, which reminded me of the importance of helping others and gave me a new sense of purpose. Through these challenges and setbacks, I learned that transformation is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. Every obstacle, every moment of doubt, every step back was actually an opportunity to reaffirm my commitment to the new life I had chosen. Slowly. I began to see these challenges not as punishments or signs of failure, but as an integral part of the journey. They strengthened me, taught me patience and perseverance, and deepened my understanding of what really mattered in life. As time passed, the highs and lows began to balance out. Relapses became less frequent and less intense. The challenges, although still present, seemed more manageable. I was learning to not only live with my new perspective, but to fully integrate it into every aspect of my life. As the years passed, I began to notice an interesting pattern forming in my life. It seemed that the more I aligned myself with my new purpose and remained open to possibilities, the more meaningful encounters and unexpected connections I experienced. One of these meetings took place in 2010 when I met Pastor Juan Ortiz. I had finally fulfilled my promise to go to church although I still felt a little out of place in my surroundings. It was then that Pastor Juan approached me after the service. He looked me in the eye and said, You've been through something deep, haven't you? I was shocked. How could he know? I had never seen this man before. In that conversation, and in many others that followed, Pastor Juan became a spiritual guide for me. 
he didn't try to convert me or push me into a specific belief. Instead, he helped me navigate my own experiences and questions. It was through him that I learned to integrate my spiritual experience with a more structured faith practice. Another significant encounter occurred in a CPR class I decided to take. There I met Inez Garcia, a nurse who, as I would later discover, had also had a near-death experience. Our meeting seemed more than a coincidence. We shared our stories, and through this I found a community of people who had gone through similar experiences. These connections helped me better understand what had happened to me and gave me the courage to talk more openly about my experience. I began to realize that my story could help others who were going through difficult times or questioning the meaning of life. One of the most surprising moments came when my mother, Paloma, began to show interest in my spiritual journey. She had always been a devout Buddhist and was initially skeptical of my new perspective. But when she started facing health problems that doctors couldn't solve, something changed. One day, desperate with the chronic pain she felt, my mother did something she had never done before. She prayed to God. To his astonishment and mine, the pain disappeared almost instantly. This event marked the beginning of his own spiritual journey, which ended up bringing our family closer together in ways I never imagined possible. As these connections multiplied, I began to see a larger pattern forming. Every person I met, every story I heard seemed to add a piece to a larger puzzle. I began to feel like I was being prepared for something, although I didn't know exactly what. People started looking to me for advice and guidance. At first, I felt unprepared for this role. Who was I to advise others? But little by little, I realized that my experience and the lessons I had learned could actually help people. Not because I had all the answers, but because I had learned to ask the right questions. I started organizing small discussion groups in my home. These were not religious gatherings in the traditional sense, but safe spaces where people could share their experiences, fears, and hopes. In these groups, I saw people of different backgrounds and beliefs connecting on a deep level, finding comfort and inspiration in each other. One of the most unexpected and meaningful connections came through a dream. One night I dreamed of a man I had never seen before. In the dream, he told me to look for a specific book. When I woke up, the title of the book was clear in my mind. I found the book and, to my surprise, it was a diary of a man who had lived in the early 20th century and who had had visions of future events, including one in October 2024. This book became a crucial piece of the puzzle for me. It not only validated my own experience, but also gave me insights into the possible meaning of the event I had envisioned. All of these connections, Pastor Juan, Inez, my mother, the discussion groups, even the book I found through a dream, seemed to be guiding me towards something bigger. I still didn't know exactly what it was, but I felt like I was on the right path. As I approached October 2024, these connections became increasingly frequent and meaningful. It was as if the universe was conspiring to prepare me, to prepare us, for what was to come. And although there were still moments of doubt and fear, I felt more ready than ever to face what the future held. As the years passed and we approached October 2024, I felt a growing sense of urgency. It wasn't a feeling of fear or anxiety, but rather a heightened awareness that something significant was about to happen. My preparation took several forms. First, I intensified my search for knowledge. I read voraciously on a variety of topics, spirituality, science, history, philosophy. I felt like I needed to have a broader understanding of the world and how things connect. I also took time to develop practical skills. I learned first aid, basic survival techniques, and even how to grow my own food. I didn't know exactly what to expect from the event I had envisioned, but I wanted to be prepared for any scenario. My spiritual practice has also deepened. Meditation and prayer have become an integral part of my daily life. Through these practices, I felt like I was becoming more in tune with that voice I had heard during my near-death experience. An important part of my preparation was sharing what I knew with others. I began to talk more openly about my experience and what I felt was coming. I didn't want to alarm people or sound like a doomsday prophet, but I felt a responsibility to warn those who were willing to listen. Surprisingly, 
Many people were receptive to my message. I discovered I wasn't the only one who felt like something big was about to happen. Many others, from different backgrounds and beliefs, also had a sense that we were approaching a turning point in human history. We form a kind of informal network, sharing information, resources, and mutual support. We were not an organized group with a hierarchical structure, but rather a loose community of individuals united by a common vision. As we got closer to October 2024, I started to have more vivid and frequent dreams. In these dreams, I saw flashes of future events, crowds in the streets, lights in the sky, changes in the landscape. I woke up from these dreams with an even greater sense of urgency. About six months before the scheduled date, I decided to organize a retreat. I invited people from our informal network, as well as anyone who felt called to participate. For a week, we gathered in a remote location, meditating, sharing visions, and discussing what we could expect and how we could best prepare. It was during this retreat that I had one of the most profound experiences since my near death. During a group meditation, I had a clear vision of the event to come. These were not specific details, but rather a general understanding of its meaning. I saw that it was not a catastrophic event, as many feared, but rather a moment of profound transformation for humanity. I shared this vision with the group, and together, we began to formulate an action plan. We decided that our role was not to try to avoid or control what was coming, but rather to help people navigate change. Each of us has committed to being a beacon of hope and guidance in our respective communities. In the weeks leading up to October 2024, there was a palpable energy in the air. People could feel that something was about to happen, even if they didn't know exactly what. Media, governments, and religious institutions began to notice and respond to this collective energy. For me, these last few days have been a time of deep reflection. I looked back at the journey that had brought me here. The pain, the loss, the near-death experience, the years of growth and preparation. Everything seemed to have led me to this moment. The day before the big day, I sat quietly in my garden, looking up at the stars. I felt a mixture of emotions, anticipation, admiration, a little apprehension, but most of all, a deep sense of peace. No matter what tomorrow would bring, I knew I was where I was supposed to be, doing what I was supposed to do. As the world waited with bated breath for the dawn of a new day, I felt ready. Ready to face whatever comes. Ready to help guide others through change. Ready to witness the next chapter in human history. The future was coming, and with it, the promise of a new era. Here we are just days away from the great event that was revealed to me so many years ago. It's hard to believe that October 2024 is practically knocking on our door. The last few weeks have been a whirlwind of emotions and activities. Our network of conscious people has grown exponentially in recent months. It seems like the closer we get to the date, the more people are feeling like something significant is about to happen. It's not just those who have had spiritual experiences like mine. It's people from all walks of life, from scientists to community leaders, who are realizing that we're on the cusp of major change. I've been spending a lot of time reflecting on what we can expect. Based on my views and the insights I have gained over the years, I do not believe it will be a catastrophic event in the traditional sense. I'm not expecting natural disasters or large-scale conflicts. Instead, I feel it will be a profound shift in the collective consciousness of humanity. I imagine it could be something like a mass awakening, a moment when the barriers that separate us from each other and the natural world suddenly dissolve. Perhaps it is a contact with a higher intelligence, or a scientific revelation that fundamentally changes our understanding of the universe. Or maybe it's something we can't even imagine with our current minds. In the last few days, I have dedicated myself to helping people prepare emotionally and spiritually. We organize mass meditation groups, healing sessions and sharing circles. The idea is to create a safe space for people to process their emotions and open up to what's to come. We have also been working to ensure that practical needs are met. We have established support centers in several communities where people can come together, share resources and support each other during this time of transition. One of the most surprising things has been seeing how traditional divisions, political, 
religious, cultural, seem to be dissolving as we get closer to the event. It's as if we are all recognizing, on a deep level, that we are part of something bigger than our superficial differences. Personally, I feel a mix of emotions. There is an exciting expectation, of course, but also a sense of responsibility. I feel like I was prepared for this moment, not to be a leader in the traditional sense, but to be a guide, a facilitator to help people navigate this transition. At the same time, I am fully aware that despite all my preparations and visions, I don't know exactly what will happen, and that's fine. I have learned along this journey that life is fundamentally unpredictable, and that our task is not to control the future, but to open ourselves to it with courage and compassion. The stars shine brightly in the night sky, and there's an electricity in the air that I can almost touch. In just a few days, when October arrives, I believe we will awaken to a transformed world. I don't know exactly what this new world will look like, but I have faith that it will be a step forward in our collective evolution. I believe we will see an increase in empathy, compassion, and connection between all living things. Perhaps we will witness incredible advances in our understanding of the universe and our place in it. Regardless of what happens, I am grateful to be here in this moment, as a witness and participant in this great change, and I am grateful for all those who walked alongside me on this journey, who believed in me and in themselves, who had the courage to open themselves to the unknown. As I sit here, in the final days of September, on the brink of this great event, I can't help but reflect on the incredible journey that has brought me to this point. From that fateful night in January 2008 when I was on the brink of death, to this moment of collective anticipation, every step of the way seems to have been guided by an invisible hand. I remember the broken man I was before my near-death experience, lost a desperate, wallowing in addiction and pain. That man seems so distant now, almost as if he were someone else. And in a way, it is. The transformation I experienced was not just a change in habits or beliefs, but a complete reconstruction of my being. Over the years, I have faced many challenges. There were moments of deep doubt, periods when I questioned everything I had experienced. There were relapses and moments of weakness, but every obstacle, every moment of uncertainty, only served to strengthen my resolve and deepen my understanding. One of the most important lessons I learned is that transformation is not a one-time event, but an ongoing process. It is not something that happens to us, but something we actively do, day in and day out. Every choice we make, every act of kindness, every moment of awareness moves us one step further on our journey. Another crucial lesson was the importance of community. Initially, I thought my experience and my mission were something I had to carry alone. But over time, I discovered the power of sharing, of connecting with others who were on similar journeys. The network of kindred souls we formed not only supported me through difficult times, but also amplified our collective impact in ways I never could have imagined. Reflecting on all of this, I feel a deep gratitude. Gratitude for the second chance I received. Gratitude for each person who crossed my path and taught me something. Gratitude even for the challenges I faced, as they shaped and strengthened me. As we prepare for what's to come, I can't help but marvel at the timing of it all. The world is at an inflection point. We face unprecedented challenges, climate change, inequality, conflict. But we also have incredible opportunities. Our technology has advanced at a dizzying pace. Our understanding of the universe and ourselves is expanding rapidly. We are ready for a quantum leap in our evolution as a species. And this is where the October event comes in. I believe that what we are about to experience is not just an external change, but a profound transformation in our collective consciousness. It's as if all of humanity is about to have its own near-death experience. A moment of crystal clarity that will make us reevaluate everything we thought we knew. I don't know exactly what this transformation will be like. Perhaps we will see a technological advance that fundamentally changes our relationship with the world around us. Or maybe it's a cosmic event that expands our understanding of the universe. Or it could be something so subtle and profound that we will only realize its true magnitude over time. Whatever it is, I am convinced it will take us to a new level of consciousness 
empathy and interconnection. I imagine a world where barriers between people dissolve, where we recognize our fundamental unity not just with each other, but with all life on Earth and beyond. Of course, it won't be an easy or instantaneous process. Even after the event, there will be work to be done. We will have to learn to navigate this new reality, to integrate our new understanding into our daily lives. There will be resistance, fear, and confusion, but there will also be an unprecedented opportunity for growth, healing, and transformation. My role, and the role of all those who have been prepared for this moment, will be to help facilitate this transition. We will be the guides, the healers, the bridge builders, not because we are special or superior, but because we are blessed with a vision of what is possible, and we have a responsibility to share that vision. As the days of September draw to a close, I feel a mix of emotions, anticipation, wonder, a touch of apprehension, but most of all, a deep sense of peace. I know that no matter what happens in October, we are on the threshold of something extraordinary. For those reading this, I want to leave one final message. Do not be afraid. Open your hearts and your minds. Be ready to embrace the unknown. Remember that we are all part of something bigger than ourselves, and that each of us has a vital role to play in the great tapestry of existence. The future is coming, and it is brighter, more beautiful and full of possibilities than we can imagine. Together, we will take the next step in our collective journey. Together, we will enter a new era of awareness, compassion and connection. And so, with a heart full of hope and eyes focused on the horizon, I prepare for the days to come. May October bring us light, love and transformation. May we rise to the challenge and opportunity that awaits us. The future is coming, and we are ready.